Welcome back everybody to a brand new episode of Pine Outdoors. Links to my store, Instagram, and Facebook can be found in the description box below. Tonight we're going to run a gallon of the Nebulous Hologram. We're starting to run out of it. The stock's getting low, so I'm going to run you guys through this machine too and show you guys what a workhorse it is. I'm not the guy to say that I'm in love with something, but hey, I really do like this machine a whole lot. As you can see right here, we're starting at 73.9, 73.9. I'm gonna go ahead and fire the machine up. We're gonna wait for this to heat up to 240 degrees and I'll show you guys how to purge the lines. It's super easy to clean this rig. And this part here is super easy too. Just reach down in here somewhere around 100 degrees I think I'm around 80 or something like that right now you can just grab this plug and look at that you see that skin coming out I hope you guys can see that but that skin right there is not going to be enough to cause any problem even if we're running clear um, I don't even worry about cleaning this thing off I just sit it back in there they've been running beautifully same story over here we're going to look down in here there's a plug kind of get a finger up underneath one side of it and it'll start peeling you see that film right there and uh, you know if you're really worried about it you could sometimes i'll circle around if the colors are really far off but what i found to work really well for me is if i just do colors that are light you know start out with clears cycle through my clear colors and uh, by the time i get to the darks there's not much of a color difference this machine is just really easy to clean and this is the amount of waste that i have left i thoroughly enjoy this machine now that we have our machine turned on i'll go over here i put two 32 fluid ounce cups in Nineteen minutes does the trick. Let's run through the settings that I have here. Very rarely do I turn my stir motors up higher than that. Over here, you press the set button and it'll show you the temperature this one's set to. This one's set to 314. And this one's set to 319. I really like to run the right side a little bit hotter. Baits will still look good if a little bit of your clear back kind of rolls over on your belly. But if that belly comes up over the top, they look terrible so that's the reason why i do that and this runs real smooth normally whenever i'm running a batch i like to have this air shooting here at me i've got an air intake right here so this cold air from outside comes in and it gives you fresh air right here while you're making it and uh, it carries the fumes or anything that's in these cups it goes straight out the exhaust right there since i'm making a video right now and i don't want to give you guys wind noise that's why i have it turned off it works great for cooling the pots down I gotta say thanks to each and every one of you for your views, for your comments, your likes, your subscribes, all that stuff's really important. Um, we're up to 915 subs, something like that. We're almost to the 1,000 sub giveaway. I'm super stoked for some person to win all that stuff. I'm ready to ship it. I need you guys to do me a solid and down in the comment section below, if you could put me a color that you would like to see in the upcoming videos. The colors you guys come up with are awesome. With the ultra mold shooting star, look at it. Right now we got 10 minutes left on the clock for cooking the plastic. We're already sitting at a healthy 240 degrees. And this is whenever I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to purge the system. You take your injector, a lot of the times it'll be sticky before you get going, especially at this low of a temp. I've got this little piece of an old Swiss Army knife that's broke off, just kind of a knockoff, but I kind of stick it down here into the port because sometimes you have a little bit of plastic that'll get kind of hung up in there and gives you a little bit of a problem when you're cleaning, but still super easy process sometimes giving her a little bit of lube seems to help too okay i'm gonna go ahead and insert it into the port just like so right there that was most of it to come out go ahead and do it one more time that's it that's going to be everything that we need pop the lid out here this is the goop that you got give it a little bait maker shuffle come over here you can see down there on the bottom there's a little plug whatever you want to call it slug i think is what they say in the user 
manual it does look kind of like a little slug in there i guess now on the back of the machine i've got this back set to 350 so between 325 and 375 and i've got the same thing going on back here on this one it's at 350 on the back this is the perfect setup um, I let this preheat this side will get up to about 319 this side will be like 314 315 This machine is an animal because it will hold that temperature Exactly where you want it to be plus it preheats the injector I actually have a dual seven ounce injector that's going to be coming in here before too long So seven ounces on this side and seven ounces on this side and that'll be great because what we were using was a dual six ounce when we very first started with the fat guys fishing we had a dual six ounce injector which worked really well and we were able to fill one two three four five molds up so each one of these molds is about two ounces of plastic in each one of them so i'm hoping that whenever we get the 14 ouncer as long as i can keep the length of the injector the heat maintained we should be able to go a little bit further than half. So I'm hoping two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 12, and still have a little bit, but I don't know that I will inject that one just because I've noticed if this isn't preheated and you don't have your stuff set up right, um, then it seems to kind of like get a little clog right here. But that's why the preheating process is so important. And before I actually start running the baits, I plug this in, I turn it, and I will actually cycle it back three times and then I'll start shooting and it, it'll maintain that temperature the whole time. It works great. My main concern is with the dual seven ounce injector that's going to be coming in. I believe that it's going to be a little bit trickier to keep the whole thing warm. Um, so that's why I'm kind of anticipating rather than saying two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12, 14 every single time if we can just get to five or six I can go back over here and return my plastic to my machine I'm good to go. So as you can see I'm already here at 317 and 320 uh, Perfect temp. This is gonna be ready to go. We still have two minutes left on the clock for the plastic So I'm gonna run inside real quick and grab some stuff. And I'll be right back This is where I'll go ahead and do one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit, just like this. Go ahead and push it back in. We want to get as much heat as we can on this injector.
so when I get down here to the end I go ahead and put it in draw real slow out get everything you can out then I go ahead and turn it up like this see right there I got a little bit flowing out of each that might be enough for just maybe one more maybe I already ran out and I didn't have my GoPro ready so I apologize for that so then all you got to do is turn your machine off turn your stirs off I point my tornado down and turn my air on full blast have it blowing down here on the machines I don't even open mine just to keep let it kind of cool down to maybe 270 250 something like that before I ever pop the top um, if I'm really cooking and really going I'll let it fall down to 240 250 ish I'll get my little plug out and try to wipe my skin out a little bit, try to peel it out of there, and I'll go ahead and clean it that time. I'm really enjoying these cooling plates. It makes the work a breeze. Uh, I have about 20 minutes of cook time, then I have a gallon of plastic ready to go, and I usually can run these in about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, something like that. It doesn't take long when you have ice in the thing because as soon as you're full, you can declamp it, you don't have to mess with the little knobs and all that. You're ready to go. Let's pop them out. They're beautiful. It runs them perfect every single time. There's no pressure falling, pressure rising. There's no wrestling with a compressor. No fighting temperatures. I just, I don't have anything but good to say about this machine. Like you guys seen in my other video, I don't think that I lost them. I think they genuinely forgot to send me these, but I sent an email in and bro, in like two days, they had these things shipped to me. I've already got them put on. I'm an ultra molds man through and through. Then from here, I just go ahead and put my 12 inch pegboard hangers up. I like to take a little bit of this worm oil here, lube her up real nice. Then I just start hanging them. These 12 inch pegboard hangers are great for putting your mixer motors on if you got them set up. That's actually how I was running them on the last machine that I have. I just haven't got this everything all configured exactly the way that I want it to be super optimal. Uh, but we're working towards that. If you guys are interested in purchasing these 12 inch pegboard hangers, um, you can go to my link in the description box below. I have a Amazon affiliate link there. Um, if you guys buy them there, that helps me out a lot. As usual, the Fat Guys Fishing Molds that I use right here, these are 40 cavity BA stingers. You can go on their website at fatguysfishing.com, enter in promo code PINEOUTDOORS, you can get 10% off your mold order. If you visit baitplastics.com, that's baitplastics with an S, baitplastics.com, Enter in promo code Pine Outdoors, 5% off, all lowercase. You can get 5% off your plastisol, glitter, and colorants. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.